I've seen quite a few posts on Facebook recently of people wondering how to set up various things on their reverse osmosis plants. So I thought I'd make a little video so that you can see how I do mine. I'm not saying it's the only way, but it uh, works for me. Here we've got the raw water coming in from the tap. I've got a shut-off valve there. And then immediately after the shut-off valve, I have got a sub-meter. This measures the amount of water that I'm taking for the business because uh, I'm with Anglian water and whereas with the domestic water in the house I have to pay a supply charge and also a sewerage charge. With the business I'm not returning any waste water to the drains so I only pay for supply which costs pound fifty-seven a cubic meter and I save the £2.53 a cubic metre sewage charge. So that's why I have the sub-meter there, and I just have to give my water company a reading off that from time to time. Coming along from there, this grey pipe that comes down the back of the RO, you can just see here, is the supply pipe. Uh, this, this tube's a heater to stop it getting cold in winter. The supply pipe enters the side of my pure water tank, which is a 200... I've got two of these 220 litre plastic barrels where there is a stop valve, a uh, float valve. You can see the float down here and if I press that down the system will start running. The unprocessed tap water comes into the float valve here and then it comes out and goes up to the reverse osmosis plant. The point of this is that it, when, the, when my pure water tank is full that shuts off the supply and stops it running. Um, right, so the raw water comes up here to here where it enters the filters. We've got a, a sediment filter here and it's just going a bit yellow. I need to change that this week. Uh, carbon and then, up, and then from the carbon filter it goes up to the membrane uh, which you can see at the top here. Uh, this is the flush valve now in addition to the flush valve, I've got a shut-off valve here uh, on a T-piece. Uh, one pipe, you can barely see at the back there, goes through to the DI. And then I have this second pipe here on a T-piece um, as a draw-off point. I use that for two things. Uh, firstly, to check what the TDS of the water is coming out of the membrane before DI. But also, each day when I start making water, when you, when you turn on the membrane to start with, um, you will always get a spike in the TDS for a few minutes. And so what I do is I drop this pipe into the jug I've got here. It's not going to stand upright because it's empty. And I run out probably two or three litres. Um, when I first turn it on, the TDS out of my membrane is probably around 12. Um, and then after this jug is about two thirds full, it will drop down to the usual nine that I expect. Coming back up here to the membrane, so the other pipe coming out of the back of that T-piece goes round the back of here and goes into my DI. I've actually got a very small DI. It only holds just over a pint of resin, um, but for my small operation, I only make around 300 litres a day. That's perfectly adequate and uh, actually lasts me about a month before I have to change the resin. So it goes into the, the water goes into the DI and then comes out here on the product pipe which goes back down into my tank here. And if I just press the float valve down for a few moments it won't start. And I don't know why that is. Oh well. A bit of troubleshooting needed. Anyway, I've got a shut off valve there because when I'm drawing off the water, when I first turn on the TDS, I don't want any water passing through the resin um, and eating up the resin. It also uh, helps when I'm flushing the unit uh, to turn that off to, again to stop water going through so that the flush is totally effective. Just back up the top in the corner here, behind the meter, there is my booster pump. Um, up there is a pressure gauge which shows that the, the pump pressure is about 100 psi and this little black thing here is a low pressure switch um, when the stopcock turns off the water supply 
Um, the low pressure switch will stop the pump running, otherwise it would burn the pump out without any water coming through. I'll just back out a little bit and then you can see that I've got this 220 litre barrel there and there's another one, there's a white one next to it. You can just about make the water level in it. And then the red hose coming out, that's my transfer pump for filling up my jerry cans. There's a couple of them sitting there on the trolley. That's my RO system. And then I'll... Oh, the water is just, just beginning to dribble out of the pure water pipe there, just for a second. It's very slow at the moment because my booster pump uh, is a diaphragm pump and it needs to be rested from time to time. So I've got it on a timer, you can see the timer up there, and it shuts off for half an hour every four hours. And it's in a rest phase at the moment, so the pump isn't running. Coming outside, so you can see, there's the supply from the house. Passes under a little protective ramp to get the wheelie bins over it. Goes into the garage there. And higher up, there is the waste pipe coming out is insulated I don't know whether it really needs to be but it runs all the way down the side of the garage here you can just about see it and then tucked away around the corner here I've got another 220 litre barrel which uh, catches some of the waste water so I can use it in the garden I've got a pipe down the bottom here uh, the hose pipe runs down to my veggie patch and then in the corner here, there's a, an overflow pipe which goes into the drain. I say it goes into the drain, actually it doesn't. I've got a soak away that I d dug in my garden because that way I can get rid of the waste water without putting it in the drain, putting, paying the sewage charge. And that's down the back here. I don't know if you can see it through the vegetation. But yeah, there's, there's the pipe. Here's the pipe here from the tank. I can't really see it, can you? But the pipe there disappears into the garage um, rainwater pipe which goes to the soak away. So that's my RO system.